Your mind is the biggest trickster. Your mind is such a manipulator. Like when we feel fear and we don't want to do something because we fear, then our brains will come up with all of these thoughts to rationalize why not to do something. Joining me today on the podcast is Shirley Chalk, who is the owner of I Ping Tai Chi School in Milford, Connecticut. She's known as the stress bender. Before being a business owner, she had a very successful career in finance and was the director of finance training and development at Yale University. When the pandemic hit and shut down the world, she took what seemed like an in-person studio's worst nightmare, but turned it into something that could reach even more people by bringing her classes online. She has 55,000 followers on TikTok and over 100,000 followers on Instagram. She's won multiple awards and accolades, but I don't have time to list them all in this intro. So just get right to the interview. Shirley, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Gino, for having me. It's my pleasure. So if we could start by, you know, giving a little bit more about yourself and telling us in your words who you are. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I did not plan on being a content creator. So it just goes to show that you really don't know where your life is going to lead you. I have always lived my life by following my gut to go do the things that felt right, to choose the things that I really wanted to do. And that has been my career. And I had a really wonderful finance career. I thought that I was going to be a finance professional until I retired. While I was advancing on my finance career, I was also training very seriously in Tai Chi, which is an internal martial art. I had been studying martial arts for my entire adult life. When I moved to Connecticut, I found Grandmaster Ai Ping Chang. I led our competition team. We competed nationally and internationally, and I was also her assistant director at school. My original plan was when I retired with my full pension at age 55, at that point, I would take over the Tai Chi school and teach Tai Chi as a leisurely activity because it was something that really did drive me. I loved doing it. It benefited me in so many ways that I knew I wanted to teach it eventually. Uh, But then Master Ai Ping's daughter decided to settle in Texas. She then had children. And so where your grandkids are, you tend to wind up going. So Master Ai Ping and her husband, they moved to Texas and a decision had to be made. What happens to the school? The school that has been part of this Connecticut community since 1996, if you have any interest in Tai Chi or Chinese martial arts, you would know about our school. It had such an impact on so many people. What do we do about it when she leaves? There were two options. Either I took it over and continue its legacy, or she would sell it to someone who was interested in purchasing it who had no connection with our legacy. And so I had to make a decision. And that was when I thought about just all the benefits that I personally gained from the Tai Chi practice in my life and how I really felt like it was a secret scroll in helping me to navigate life's conflicts. There's so many things that I could see around me where my peers, it seemed like they were having so many uphill battles and they were getting really exhausted and burnt out by work conflicts, 
life conflicts, challenges that came up, changes that come up, unexpected obstacles, people who don't cooperate with you, all of these things that really make it exhausting to live in our modern society and just the amount of stress that people had and not that many effective stress management tools that people had to to alleviate that stress. And that's when I realized that it was my Tai Chi training and the techniques that I learned that helped me be able to navigate life in a much easier way because I had energy to sustain me. I didn't feel like I was getting beat up every day, exhausted at the end of the day. And my career was able to advance in a very organic way. That was when I realized that like, this is what I need to bring to the world because I didn't see other people talking about Tai Chi in this way. When you see people teaching Tai Chi, it's always in the realm of the movement. And I wasn't really seeing it addressed in the way that I felt was The most important, the most beneficial is how do we help people change their mindset and learn a set of techniques that makes life easier to live. And so I decided to give up my finance career to take over the school. And I always had the intention of growing it into something bigger than just a school. But when you're operating a business, you're so caught up in the everyday tasks that need to be done. It's very hard to implement something new when you have to operate the business. So it actually wound up being a blessing in disguise for me when COVID hit everything came to a stop. And that actually allowed me that time to think about how to grow my business and my brand in a way that I wanted to when I didn't have to just do that that churn that you do when it's that everyday grind of operating the business. I actually had the opportunity to think about how do I bring this in that new direction that I knew I wanted to, to bring it and then having that time to experiment and explore different things and try different things until I found the formula that was right for me. Mm. So yeah, you said something earlier that you've always kind of done something where it felt right or you could feel Mm -hmm. it in your gut was the right decision. So was it difficult for you to make the decision to leave your your job and, and those benefits and the pension and everything? Or did it, you felt it was the right decision and therefore it was you know, an, uh, a no-brainer. It felt right, but I didn't do it based on a hope and a prayer. Mm. You know, I am a finance person, <laughs> so I had to make sure that financially I could make it work because I did have a family and I have kids and a, a house and. I wasn't going to bet the farm on a brand new business model that wasn't proven yet when I didn't really know exactly how it was going to work because a new business needs the financial resources to sustain it. And when you're trying to create something new with a new business model, uh, you need to preserve the money. Like when the money runs out, your new business is done. So uh, I think that that is something that a lot of new entrepreneurs, uh, they are not really financially prepared for how 
much longer it actually takes to get there and how much more money than you think it will take to get there because you're going to make so many mistakes and those mistakes cost money and those mistakes cost time and time is money. So I knew it was right. I had faith that I could figure it out, but I knew I needed to have enough financial resources to support me because I didn't have investors backing this. I didn't have business partners that were funding. It was all myself self-funding. So when I left the university, I actually thought about how can I secure my exit in a way that would give me a financial exit ramp that would allow me to be able to figure out the business side. So I changed my position into a position that had an end date that Mm -hmm. would have a severance at the end. So I exited with a severance package and I was very transparent with everyone about my my goals and where I was going. So I was able to have that financial exit ramp to help me then figure out my business model. Another thing that is important, this is something that I always counsel new entrepreneurs and especially people who are transitioning from mid-career to become entrepreneurs and business owners. One of the things that I always hear from people, they're telling me how I inspire them to pursue their passion. Me quitting my finance career to pursue my passion really inspires them. And I actually always correct that thinking. It may just be semantics, but I think the semantics is important. I'm not actually pursuing a passion. I feel like I am fulfilling a purpose. For me, passion is something that is associated with a high. And passions have an emotion that's attached to it with that high. And there are a lot of lows (laughs) when you're pursuing your business, that there may be times when the lows are going to be far more than the highs. And it is something that is going to feel like it's just, it's painful at that point. But if you feel like it's a purpose that you're, going through, then it gives you that drive to get through the lows. If you're only trying to pursue that passion, feeling like you know it's going to be that high all the time, then you're going to wind up getting discouraged. And for, for me, it really is more than something that I feel passionate about. It's almost a compulsion. Like that's what I tell people. It's like, it's almost like that thing that you just can't stop yourself from having to do like it, it, it's mm-hmm. almost like when you're playing a game like you're uh, I, I'm a gamer and for me is really similar to that game that like drives you crazy you hit certain spots that just suck because it isn't fun anymore, but you have to keep getting back to it because you have to get through it to go on. And that drive to keep going on is almost like a compulsion. And like that for me is what I look for and what I choose to do. Like if I don't feel that drive to do that thing, then it's not worth me doing. <laughs> That's for all of my life's choices. Somebody could say like, um, well, how, how do you know that? Or how do you listen to that voice? You, you can hear the voice, but sometimes you don't listen to it. And, and mm-hmm. how, how would somebody 
more tune into that voice in their head and and to be able to listen to their own thoughts and their own ways of thinking and try to block out the either the learned patterns how would you go about like trying to listen to yourself more does does tai chi yeah help you with that? yeah 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 so that is why i think that tai chi is really the secret school because mm-hmm. it is not about listening to the voices in your mind mm-hmm. your mind is the biggest trickster. Your mind is such a manipulator. Our minds will build defenses and they will rationalize things for us to protect ourselves from fear. Like when we feel fear and we don't want to do something because we fear, then our brains will come up with all of these thoughts to rationalize why not to do something. And if we actually listen to what our brain's telling us, then all we're doing is just kept hostage to our fears. So our senses actually are so much stronger and more accurate and faster than our thoughts. And this is scientifically proven. So if you can actually learn how to listen to your senses, which live in your body, and get your brain to match what your body is feeling, then you have an internal compass that is very strong. Uh, So that is what Tai Chi training is about. You can't think the movements. You have to connect your whole body to feel the movements and do it all together. So you have to get deep, deep within the senses of your body. And you also learn if you're tensing up. When you fear, you tense. Once you tense, then you disconnect your ability to tap into your body's senses. That's when the thinking comes in, the fear takes over. So if you can actually get yourself to come into your body and stay relaxed, even in an uncomfortable situation, then you can actually tap into your senses. And what we're trying to do is bring everything together to focus in one direction, think, feel, act all together in one direction. So often people wind up just getting in their own way and causing themselves a lot of confusion and uh, stopping themselves from actually achieving success because they're all split in their intentions. Thinking one thing, saying something else, doing something else, It's all scattered, putting you in all different directions. If you can always think, say, do the same thing all the time, then, you know, how powerful will that action be? Right. So, but we don't do that because we fear, right? We're we're afraid. Well, I can't say what I really think. Like that's, that's not okay. Well, I I can say something to this person, but I won't actually do that because I don't really want to do that. I'm just going to say it, but I'm going to do something else. Uh, so it's just all of these scattered intentions that prevent you from bringing it all together. When you can bring it all together, then you have an internal compass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow, that that makes so much sense to me, <laughs> and definitely some as somebody who lives in their head a lot uh, and is trying to like get back into their body. I I don't know that just made so much sense to me. <laughs> makes me want to sign up for a class immediately. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is that is why. Uh, so my purpose, my purpose is to share these mindset ideas. And to also bring it uh, beyond just learning Tai Chi for the internal martial art. Like I, the internal martial art is how I got to this understanding. 
And I think that to really be able to use, to fully utilize these ideas into techniques that your body can understand and feel, that's the path to pursue. But a lot of people can benefit from just changing their mindset to start thinking about, you know, how are they making their decisions and how are they disconnected from their senses and what are some like ways that we can tune in to our senses more, especially in our modern society where everything just leads us further and further away from our own senses, right? We rely on technology to live now. (laughs) Our bodies tell us what we need way better than what any app does. So that's a lot of what my Instagram content is because Instagram is where I have the biggest reach and you have the most people coming in and it's like short tidbits, right? 90 seconds. What can you really convey in 90 seconds? You can do little tips that are more for the general public. And I've been trying to do more to just allow people to learn how to come into their own bodies, to feel what their bodies are telling them. Our bodies are telling us things all the time. It's just, we aren't listening. Like I I, I equate it, like if you have a kid and you tell them to do something, and they ignore you. <laughs> and you tell them again and they ignore you. Like the only way you can get them to hear you is if you yell, right? Like you then you yell at them and then they respond. Well, right, that's us and our bodies. Like our bodies are telling us things all the time, but we're not listening. It's when it gets to that point where it has to yell at us, like the pain, like you've been in a bad posture all day, hunched over, and now your neck is in pain. And then you finally pay attention Mm -hmm. to it, right? (laughs) Like, so like, these are things that if you can settle into your body and feel what your body is telling you, you become more aware to your your senses, you connect your senses more and you allow that to actually become stronger. And then you realize that if you trust the body, then you'll be able to tell when the brain is just trying to manipulate you. Mm. <laughs> our brain is our, our biggest manipulator. We are our own worst enemy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do want to get more into talking about your business too. And mm-hmm. I know that like you've basically put content as the forefront of, of your business model now. And yeah. I want to ask you, was there any uh, mindset shift that you had to overcome to be able to value that? Because I think a lot of business owners will be like, oh, that's just like an extra thing you can mm-hmm. do if you have time for it and then you never have the time for it. Yeah. What was the thing? I mean, I know having a break and, and being shut down, but like mm-hmm. what what was the the shift in your mind to be able to to value that and to still do it today even though you're back open? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not really a big social media person. I the school didn't have an Instagram until the pandemic, actually. And social media was not where I was putting any attention in the beginning. When the pandemic hit, all movement instructors had to figure out how are we going to make money? We can't hold our in-person classes anymore, which is what was making us money. So how do we make money in this pandemic environment? I was thinking, okay, I have to be able to monetize very quickly. I need to have a very seamless way where I can provide value that my students will come online because of course it has to be online. If it's not in person, it has to be online. So I have to come online and I have to provide something that still provides value that they will pay me for. And what can that thing be? And I made a very quick decision that Zoom classes were not the way to go for me. It works for yoga. But for Tai Chi, where you actually have to 
follow where you have to step and turn. If you're supposed to step right and bring your right hand up and I do this, when you do that, you've got, you're doing the opposite. You can't really follow me well, right? So if I continue to go here and then I got to go here and I turn around that way, um, you can't follow that well. I can do the mirror image and that works if we're just kind of in this two-dimensional space. But once we start moving around in circles and start stepping and turning, that gets confusing as well. And Zoom has very little reach. You have to make sure that the people who you want to come have that Zoom link before they can come into your class. So I was thinking, well, what would I want to have as the experience as a student? But ultimately, I'm a student first. I'm a teacher, but I'm a student first. And I want everything that I do to have provide the best value for me as a student. Like surely the teacher has to provide value for surely the student. So putting my student hat on and also just knowing what I know about technology and the different platforms that are out there, I was actually thinking that the viewing experience that I want people to have is actually what the gamers set up for their Twitch streams. I recorded a lot of content in my school in front of the mirror with the camera behind me so that the viewing experience is like if you were in class at the school, because that's what your experience is. You would be behind me. I would be in front of you. There would be the mirror in front. You would see my back. We would be moving exactly the same, but then you would see what's happening in the front with the mirror. So that was the vision that I had as the best learning experience. So I started a Twitch stream. Twitch also allows you to monetize very, very quickly. Once you're an affiliate, you can have subscribers. The subscribers actually pay a monthly amount, but then you can also have a donation link that you put into your stream chat. And that was what I told my students. Classes, have moved onto Twitch and it's donation based. But if you can afford to pay for class, then here's the link. And a lot of my students actually paid for every class that they attended. I followed my same class schedule. So if we were you know, supposed to have class at the school, I would have that class online. People who were out of town, then had an opportunity to learn with me. I also saw this is valuable content. Like this, every time I went online and taught, this was valuable content. that I recorded all of my streams. And then once my Twitch stream actually started growing, because then once you're on Twitch, that's the beauty of Twitch, that people stumble on you. You have mm -hmm. new people that come in and it kind of grew to the point where I couldn't treat it as a class anymore. But by that point, I had accumulated so much content that I was able to package all of the prior classes into online videos that you can then subscribe to, or now you can also just download them without subscribing. So even now, those early classes, I'm still monetizing now because people subscribe to them and watch them for instruction. And then I was able to grow my Twitch channel into more what you would think a Twitch channel to, to be, grew my online community. After I stopped streaming, the community was still there. And so when I went and started Instagram and TikTok, then, you know, the community went there. And then, of course, once you go viral on TikTok and Instagram, that it just increases your reach um, so much more. So that's how it started. But 
I never, ever thought I'm going to have a hundred thousand Instagram followers. Never in my wildest dreams like, would that <laughs> even occur to me. And that wasn't a goal. That was like never a goal. The thing that I'm really proud of is my instructional videos have been viewed in all six continents. Wow. <laughs> and then, um, my brand has actually also reached Antarctica because one of my <laughs> students actually did an eco uh, tourism trip to Antarctica and she wore her I pink Tai Chi shirt <laughs> and snapped a photo in Antarctica. So wow. yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> so like that to me is important because that's engagement. Mm. That's people who, you know, are interested in what I'm doing. Um, having, uh, a lot of people um, who may not be so engaged, like that isn't as important. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Words of advice to people who are striving just for the numbers. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> unfortunately, we are coming to the end of our time here, but I did want to ask you one last question. What's next for you? I'm going to be focusing more on how do I take these techniques that have helped me with my life and communicating that to more people outside of the context of studying Tai Chi for the internal martial art, which you know is still something that is super important for me because that's why I took over I Pink Tai Chi. I made that commitment to my master that I'm continuing that legacy. And we're going to still do that, but to bring this into a greater population where some of these techniques beyond Tai Chi specific techniques, but mindset, you know, some of these tools to help people manage their stress better, like those can help many more people. And that can also lead more people into the practice of Tai Chi. You'll be seeing me more on social media with a little bit more lifestyle content. Hmm. Well, that's really exciting and uh, definitely looking forward to see what you come up with next. But thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom. And um, I hope that, you know, everything that you envision comes true. <laughs> thank you so much, Gino. And best of luck with you as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing you grow your business as well. Thank you. <laughs>